Hi guys, and welcome to my first ever video on this channel. I'm going to be taking on a Football Manager community favourite in the form of the Pentagon Challenge. For those of you who don't know what the Pentagon Challenge is, it is a fantastic save option in which you attempt to win the Premier Continental competition in every playable continent. These competitions are the Total CAF Champions League in Africa, the AFC Champions League in Asia, the CONCACAF Champions League in North America, the Copa Libertadores in South America, and finally, the UEFA Champions League in Europe, potentially culminating with the FIFA Club World Cup, although the structure of this tournament changes after the first year of every FM21 save. This makes for a very enjoyable long-term save, with plenty of potential for switching clubs regularly, something which I personally don't do often in my, in my saves due to getting too attached to the squads which I have built. If you have any feedback, please do let me know in the comments, and if you enjoy this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel, as it will really help the channel to grow. Without any further ado, let's take a look at the first team which I am managing in this save. We begin the save a couple of games into the season, having started the game at the beginning of the South African pre-season. I knew I wanted to start with Africa, as I did last year, but sadly, unlike last year, I've been un unable to find a decent African database that is updated to work with the winter update as of yet. However, I got very lucky with finding what I believe to be the perfect team to start with, the Cape Town Spurs. Now, as you can probably see from the club info page, there's not a whole lot of history available, as the club was only established in 2020 and is valued at just £9,620. In reality though, this information doesn't tell the whole story. You may have noticed the fantastic facilities, despite the fact that the Cape Town Spurs are actually in the Glad Africa Championship, the South African second division. The reason for these facilities is actually that the Cape Town Spurs used to be affiliated with Dutch Cat champions Ajax. This link, which lasted over 20 years, was severed in September 2020, following failure to get promoted to the top division, despite finishing second in the league in the 1920 season. This season, the Cape Town Spurs are sitting in 15th place in the Glad Africa Championship, with 14 points from 15 games, meaning they are currently at risk of being relegated to the third division. So, clearly, the wholesale changes around the club have had an impact on the playing performance. On Football Manager, however, the season preview has us predicted to finish comfortably first, so hopefully we can get back up to the top division pretty quickly. Now, looking at the transfer history, you'll notice that we have made signings which have not cost us any of our transfer budget. I didn't have much room to work with, starting with a £0 transfer budget and a nominal amount in the wage budget, so I've had to rely on free transfers and loans to strengthen my squad. The first three names on the incoming list, Cassiano, Sally and Batista, were signed before I arrived, and while Sally is a decent player who is starting 11 material, Cassiano and Batista are pretty useless. There seems to be some odd transfer policy of getting poor Brazilian players on freeze, who have very little to offer now and are unlikely to improve much, as there are even more in my B team, including a 24-year-old striker called Igor Balotelli, who doesn't look like he has much to his game. Thankfully, these players all seem to have a contract expiring in 2021, so I will be able to get them off the wage bill at the end of the season without too much trouble. Since joining the club, I've brought in three free transfers as well as four loan players whose wages are paid in their entirety by their parent clubs. The two sales listed were made by me, and I even received a small fee for Mbata, although this hasn't had a major effect on the finances due to the overburdened weekly wage bill. In spite of the financial concerns, however, I believe that I have managed to fill in the gaps within the squad pretty well, and I have confidence that we will be able to match our pre-season expectations of finishing first and getting promoted to the DSTV Premiership. Diving into our team's tactic, you can see that I am playing a 4-3-3 with a holding midfielder. Although it says that we are playing with a wing play tactic, you can ignore this as I started the season with this tactic before switching to a tactic which prioritises holding onto the possession a little bit more. Due to the fact that my squad is probably the best in the division, I also play with an extremely high level of engagement and defensive line, with the offside trap turned on. This is something of a risk given that Teize, who is probably my best centre-back, has just 9 acceleration and pace, but I haven't yet been punished for this so I'll persist with it until I have reason not to. Now, taking a look at this team, it's a strong squad for this division. It's predominantly made up of young South African players, with a couple of older free agents, including Teize and Sally. My star players are Mukamela, who turns out to be the key player for Cape Town Spurs, and Narodian. Mostyas Alaga is also in the league's best 11. 
You may have noticed that there are a couple of lone players in the first 11, as well as a couple on the bench and reserves. I am however most excited about Velep Hai and Johannes, two young players who actually belong to Cape Town Spurs. I'm going to have to fight to stave off interest from Mamelodi Sundowns, the best team in South Africa. The fact that they're interested is a good sign that the youth system at Cape Town Spurs is extremely strong, but it does also mean I will have to fight hard to keep these players. Moving over to the schedule, you can see I've played a few games already on this save. Predominantly friendlies, which I let my assistant manager do, as I'm not particularly interested in doing these myself. I've also played three league games. The first game, a game against Amatux, which was nil-nil, was incredibly dull, basically nothing happened, and I was using my wing play tactic at this point. On the back of that game, I then decided to switch to my favoured tactic, which I've used in other saves already on FM21, and I've since had two thrilling games, having scored three goals. Now, it's time for the first game which I'll be showing you on this save. Today, we play Royal AM, who are predicted to finish fourth and are sitting in that exact position right now. Here is the team for today's game. It's pretty much the same team that you saw before, except Zabande has come in for Tiese, as he's slightly faster than him, and I feel that he's better suited for a big game in this league. Now, I'm going to show you today's game. Hopefully, we can get a win. Here is the lineup, and I'm pretty confident that this team is good enough for a win. When in the dressing room, I generally just follow what my assistant recommends, unless I really want to say something specific. Hopefully, it will do the job today, but given my dynamics are not particularly strong at the moment, I wouldn't necessarily expect us to react very much, as you can see there. Anyway, without further ado, let's go into the game. So, this is my first game that I'm showing you guys. I'm using a 4-3-3, and they are using a 4-4-2. Most of the teams that I play against do use a 4-4-2 for whatever reason. I guess it's uh, pretty much back to basics, and here is the first chance. And it's a corner in, it's just gone over. Not too much to worry about there. We're slightly behind them on expected goals, but not by much, and now we're ahead of them. And I'm quite excited to get this save going and show you some of these games. Would like a bit more clinicality than this, because four shots on target, four shots without any on target is not a great start. This has not been a particularly exciting half, to be honest, but let's see what we can do. Right, well, that was not very impressive. I like to thrash my arms on this game. And unfortunately, there's a lot of players still nervous, but I guess because it's a reasonably big game for this division, that's not entirely surprising. I'll start thinking of making some subs a bit after the 60th minute, depending on if anyone gets tired. But Mosia Talaga particularly, being one of my star players, has been really disappointing in this game so far. Let's see, so Nerodian's a bit tired, so I think I'll bring him off, even though he's been better than others. Sadly, most of the players that I have as options off the bench are pretty nervous. I might leave Nerodian actually, um, since he's playing reasonably well, and I imagine there'll be a player who's worse who's going to end up on a yellow heart pretty soon. Medella whacking it long, good chance for Malahila, and Johnson's made a good save. We could really do with doing better than this, we haven't really made any offensive chances yet, um, we've had a couple of defensive chances we've dealt reasonably comfortably with. But for some reason, my team are a little bit nervous at the moment, so let's just demand a bit more from them, hope that that will help. Now I think it's time for a substitution. Malazzi, you can come on as a winger. I might actually change that to an inside forward, because I personally prefer to have an inside forward and a winger in my team. Lager into the box. Oh, that's very close. Nerodian shot. Header is blocked. Unlucky, but it's a it's a chance, and that's not something we've had much of in this game so far. I'm just going to go attacking to try and really turn the screw, and I'll improve my tempo just to get us going a bit quicker. Once more, I will demand... Oh, let's see what happens here, and maybe I'll end up demanding more. Maybe I will end up not doing anything. We need to defend this because this is would be an awful time to concede, but that's a good place to win it. Come on. 
that was an interesting uh, interesting chance. Very good tackle in the end, but it was a slightly unusual animation. Come on, Narodian. How has he missed that? He was on the goal line and he's missed it. Shocking from Velopai. And that is a disappointing draw. Returning back to the early season form that I had in that very first game where we basically created nothing. So I'm afraid you haven't had the most exciting start to watch. But let's hope it improves shortly. Right, so after that game, I've played one more game, which is going to lead us to our next game, which is against Bitsana Pondo Chiefs. You can see I'm probably a little bit frustrated. Expected goals got over four. They got just over one. They only had two shots on target. I had about 15 and it ended two all. Annoying. Now, once again, we have pretty much the same team as last time. Um, Velipai did drop out for the game midweek, but he's back in now. And Apollos has taken the place of Motilaga. And uh, Keenan Abrams has also come into the defence uh, for his potentially, yes, his first start of the season. Here are the lineups going into the dressing room. We're favourites for a reason. This team that we're playing, they're, they're first in the league. But they're predicted to finish 16th, so they should be very beatable. They probably just had a very good start to the season because maybe they've had easy games to start with. But a team of our quality should be able to destroy them, really. Um, and let's hope that this chance is the first first goal of the game for us. So building out the back, this is definitely part of the tactic that I've built here. And that is not part of the tactic that I've built here. Uh, usually I prefer shorter passing. And uh, I don't expect my centre-backs to be whacking out from miles away. And looks like Apollos has managed to get a break here. That's got to be a... Oh, it's a fantastic ball. But Makuma, he's not been brilliant for me so far. Lots of missed chances. Gets quite a lot of them, to be fair. So he, he does make them, but... Oh, that is disappointing. It's a really, really good goal. But we shouldn't be conceding a shot where no one is anywhere near him. Everyone just stood still. Shocking. Well, at least we're winning unexpected goals as usual. But uh, not really what we're looking for in this. Let's hope this can start to change the, the way this game is going. Johannes whacking it along to Apollos. Mukamela's breaking down the right. Let's hope he can get a good ball in. That's a great ball. Was that a shot or a, uh, was that a save or a? Oh, it must have been a better crossbar. Very disappointing, but a decent effort and certainly an improvement on what we've shown so far. And now Apollo's breaking through again. He's looked like our danger man so far. See if he can do something more. Into Sally. Oh, unlucky. De decent effort. I've had a couple of shots from range, but nothing really challenging the keeper too much. And now Mufalele has got a yellow card, having scored for them already. Let's hope we can't let them break here. Yeah, good work. Velopai into Dan. Velopai into Narodian. That's a good save. And Velopai has got his first goal. That might be his first goal for, for the club, actually. It is. Very exciting news that I am a big fan of this guy. And it's great to see him finally get on the score sheet. Hasn't taken too long, to be fair, um, particularly as he's a central midfielder. But he's uh, it's been a good finish there. Almost looked like he was going to sky it, but he's done a good job of putting it in in the end. And that's got us back on level terms. Let's hope we can build on this. Johannes into Don. Back into Johannes. I do like how we're building out the back. That's exactly what I'm asking for. And a good ball into Makuma, actually. Unfortunately, it was really good defending. But let's see what we can build from this corner. Great tackle from Velopai. Really good tackle. He's had a really good game so far. Very impressive. Particularly, he's only 17. Not many 17-year-olds can go straight into your starting 11. Admittedly, I am in South Africa, so the level of the division isn't quite as strong as, as say, the championship. But... Uh, it's really nice to have a young player that's ready for the first team and able to play pretty much every game. Let's encourage the boys. Not that they'll react ever, because they don't like me enough yet. 
Macamela seems to be injured, so I will get him off. It's a shame because he's been decent this game. And he is my star player. And Stander really isn't quite at that level um, that uh, the Mukamela is. I may end up actually shifting my entire defence around because they're all they're all quite versatile. Um, and I'm not convinced that Stander is best on the right. He's more of a left back, uh, actually. Come on, Sally, keep the ball. Sabende. Decent work. Not quite enough to... To get in. I think I will shuffle my defence around a little bit now. Let's get Abrahams on the right. Stander there and Sabande on the left hand side of the centre backs. Alright, let's keep building. Once again, absolutely ruining them on expected goals. Still not winning. Don't know if it's anything to do with my goalkeeper, but on the whole, it's a little bit disappointing to be this dominant and not making the most of it. Sally, you can go there, and let's get Kagaswain. Not quite sure how to say his name, but uh, he is a decent option to have. Let's just shift these rolls around. Might just go attacking, because that's what I seem to have to do all the time at the moment. Demand a bit more. I might have to end up dropping my striker at this rate been pretty shoddy in the last few games but the drop off from him to my other striker is pr still pretty stark um, my backup striker is the captain but he's really not very good come on lads how are we at over three expected we've had over ex seven expected goals in the last two games scored two goals need to be better Yes! Great goal from Cooker's Wayne. Now we need to get some players off because they are tired. Malazzi. Brilliant. Alright, let's hold on to this. Let's not give away another silly goal like we did in the last game. Oh no, this looks like it could be it as well. Clear it, yes. That's cleared. End the chance, end the chance, come on. You know you want to. Here's Dube. Myron. Poor defending. What is the keeper doing? It's like he wants to concede. Oh, that's a heroic header. This chance has gone on for ages, and now it's finally over, just as I speak. One last chance to get a goal, hopefully not going to be a breakaway. Villapai, great pass and pretty simple for the keeper in the end. Sally again, another good pass into Villapai and another save. We don't half make a lot of chances. And another chance here. Well, this game's certainly more interesting than the last one that you saw. I haven't told him to time waste there, but he's certainly making a good job of it, and that was not worth watching. And that is a game. We have won that one. Well done, lads. That should help our league position, because we've got three draws and three wins from our first six games now. That does see us second in the table behind. The only other team from Cape Town in the division, I believe. Injury for Mukamela, Injury for Makuma, but he'll definitely be back for the next game. So, looking ahead at the schedule... We've got two games against JDR Stars and FS Stars. Then we play Cape United in the Cup. They are currently top of the league and it's an away game. Um, but I will probably still rotate the team because I'm not too fussed about the South African Cup. I'd rather get promoted to the South African First Division. And I feel like with the number of injuries I've already had and because it's quite a condensed season due to the pandemic, it's going to be important to focus on the league in this. So next time I will show you Poliquane City and Cape United as they're two of the better teams in the league. And hopefully we can get some wins on the board before then and during that episode to really catapult us up the league. Because we've had somewhat in different form in the last bit. At least we haven't lost a single game yet, which is a good sign. Um, but I would like to see us making the most of our expected goals. 
You'd like to think that these things even out over time, but honestly, who knows with FM. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I really, really appreciate it. If you have any feedback, please do comment. Uh, I'm always keen to get feedback just to see if there's anything that I can do better, if there's anything that you guys want to see. Um, I'm happy to, to implement uh, any feedback you may have. You can also click the notification bell if you enjoyed. That will update you every time I release a new video and that will really help in the early days when I'm not quite sure what my schedule is going to be yet with, uh, with regards to the, to the YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.